All right, let's get this started. Hey, you want some closings in the next 30 to 60 days? You want to get paid? All this week, we're giving you ideas on what you could do today to get you paid in the next 30 to 60 days. So by the end of June, you've got a number of closings that have occurred. You've got some money in the bank. Look, I'm not going to go back over Monday and Tuesday. If you missed out on those, the calls are uh, recorded and they're hosted on our workplace page. Go watch them. I want to get into today's call and here it is. Expired listings. Look, is there anything better in this business than expired listings? I don't think so. I think it's the lowest hanging fruit that's out there. I think it's freaking awesome. You know, you know they want to sell. You don't have to go prospect to a whole population of people trying to find the 3% of them that might want to sell. Spend all that time, effort, money, energy trying to find 3% of an entire population that might want to sell. You know the expireds want to sell. It's a free source of business. We post them on Workplace every day, a list of every expired listing in Metro Atlanta. You know something else that I just think is awesome. You know what the house won't sell for. If the house was going to sell at that price that they had had it listed for before, it would have sold. But So you know what it won't sell for, and that's awesome because the homeowner does too. So uh, they say there's a couple things you never want to be the first owner of. I think there's three things. The first one is a golf course. You never want to be the first owner of a golf course. You never want to be the first over owner of a vineyard. And you never want to be the first listing agent. You always want to be the second one. You let the first one take all the losses. Now they mean that as a joke, but I don't think it's that funny. I think it's actually true. Uh, I love being the second agent on a listing. Everybody's getting a lot more realistic now. I think it's awesome. But um, here's the list of bullshit excuses that I hear. Well, they're mean, they're rude, they're nasty, they're contemptuous. I don't know what to say. Okay, well, just two quick points there. First of all, if you were in a conversation with a 10-year-old and the 10-year-old was mean, rude, nasty to you, that going to ruin your day? No, you would just shrug the 10-year-old off and think he's just a little punk, right? But it's not going to change your day. You don't care what a 10-year-old thinks. Think of the expired listings as 10-year-olds. They are emotional 10-year-olds. They're throwing a tantrum because they didn't get what they wanted. That's all they're doing. They're emotional 10-year-olds. Why you give it so much uh, authority? Why you let an emotional 10-year-old scare you? What's up with that? You wouldn't let a 10-year-old scare you, would you? I don't know what to say. Okay, so look, here we go. Just tell them the truth. Cut out all the tricks, cut out all the manipulation, cut out all the little techniques that you're trying to sneak in the back door with them. Just tell them the truth. And don't be attached to their response. I don't really care how you respond if you're an expired listing. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going through an exercise. I'm completing an action uh, because I think every single one of them that I speak with is going to list their home with me. No, I'm just trying to find the one today that might want to. Okay, I'm not really very attached to how you do or don't respond. So watch. Let's just get this out of the way. I've asked Warrell Thomas to role play with me this morning so that you, the people that say, well, I don't know what to say. Now can no longer say that. You're going to have to go find another excuse not to do this today. Warrell, are you with us? I am. You am. Good. Okay. Yeah. You're going to be an expired listing with me, right? And I'm calling you. Ring, ring. Right. Hey, this is Mike over at Century 21. Just a quick call to see if you're still interested in selling your property at 123 Main Street. Um, yeah, I'm 
Okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but you are still interested in selling the house. Uh, yeah. Okay. You, Terrific. Have a buyer. Uh, well, you never know. We just might. We're Century 21, right? We we've got a lot of buyers. Let's find out. Hey, when you do sell the house, where do you plan to move next? Uh, so we did plan to get that over to Gwinnett County, just to be closer to some family. Okay, so you're going to move closer to family over in Gwinnett County. Great. And Mr. Thomas, in the perfect world, when would be the best time for you to move? Honestly, uh, yesterday, but okay. uh, just as soon as possible. Yeah. Gotcha. So the only thing keeping you where you're at is just getting this home sold? Correct. Okay. Well, you know, Mr. Thomas, in my experience, and I specialize in this, I specialize in hard to sell properties. In my experience, there's only two reasons why homes don't sell. Number one, they weren't marketed correctly. Or number two, they weren't priced correctly. In your opinion, which one was your problem? Uh, well, I do believe the pricing was pretty good. I saw some that sold uh, for similar pricing. Um, uh, I guess I'll just have to lean on the marketing side. Okay. Well, you know, unfortunately, in my job, I hear this every day. And it's really disappointing because in today's market, there's no reason for a house not to sell. But if you feel like your house was priced correctly, the only reason that it didn't sell was because it wasn't marketed correctly. So I'm so glad that I have got a chance to speak with you today. And I've got an idea. You know, I'm going to be out in your part of town tomorrow afternoon, late in the day. And I'm wondering if it would be a good idea for me to stop by, take a quick look at the property with you, and see if I can come up with some ideas that might help solve the problem. Would that be a good idea? Uh, it, you know, my, uh, I don't know if I'm ready to you know, go ahead and list right now. Okay. Well, that's fair. Uh, how about this? How about if I do it just because it's part of my job and you shouldn't feel any obligation at all? But if I can come up with an idea or two that helps you get to Gwinnett County, would that be worth 15 to 20 minutes of your time? Yeah, I think, you know, yeah, just as long as you know I'm not finding anything right away, uh, but yeah. That's that fine. fine. Well, you don't really know me, so it'd be kind of crazy for you to sign something on the spot, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Well, it looks like, I'm looking at my schedule right now, Mr. Thomas, and it looks like I'm going to be in your area all afternoon tomorrow. Would something around 2 o'clock work for you, or would you prefer something later in the day, maybe around 4 I think four would be better. Okay, great. Well, why don't we do this? I'll plan to see you in the driveway at four o'clock, and we'll just take 15, maybe 20 minutes at the most, and let me see if I can come up with some ideas that'll solve the problem for you. And if I can't, just throw me off your property, okay? All right, that, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> okay, well, thanks so much for your time. Again, my name's Mike. Uh, I'm going to send you a little message just to confirm, and I'll see you tomorrow at 4. All right. Thank you, Mike. I okay. appreciate it. Okay. Thanks to, so much to Worrell for being willing to role play with me this morning. That was very last second for him, which was my intention so that he wasn't overly prepared because they're never overly prepared when you call them. Now, look, you could say that Worrell was being really nice. Well, he was. But my contention is I didn't really give him a choice. I controlled the call and I took him down that road and for him to be anything else was illogical. He would have just sounded like a 10 year old throwing a tantrum to somebody that didn't have anything to do with the cause of the problem. So it wasn't a, for him to get mean, nasty, contemptuous of me wasn't a logical conversational pattern. Now, some people will do that, but they'll kind of feel like an idiot themselves because I didn't cause their problem and they know it. So sometimes we cause our own problems by the way we speak to people. Look, I'm not calling to list your house. 
I'm calling to see if I can give you some ideas. So to expect him to want to list his house with somebody he doesn't know and that just called him from out of the blue is a little crazy on my part. So we've got to get our expectations right. We've got to get our talking points down in a logical order. And then we have to make the calls. And I don't expect every call to end up like it did with Warrell, but I expect one of them today to end up that way. And then I just got to ask you, if I expected one a day, and I did it five days a week, and only half of the people that I actually met with actually wanted to list with me, well, that would be, let's just round it down and call it two listings a week or seven or eight listings a month. And I just don't know, what do you think is seven or eight listings a month enough for you? And if I actually did put Warrell's house up for sale tomorrow at four o'clock, is it likely in today's market that if he will price it somewhat close to market value, that I will have that closing within the next 60 days? And I got one more thing for you this morning. Just a quick question. If I was to do all that, would I be going out there and making it happen for myself each day? <laughs>